anyway. All right. Yeah. So you have Gainwell as the next guy. Yeah. Um, Hit for us him, with some Gainwell. He's probably just, he's the second best receiver. You could argue that he's the best receiver at the running back position in this class. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eye at him. He's, he's phenomenal. I'd probably put him as the best. Great. And yeah, great in space. Um, offers a ton down the field and a ton in the slot. And that's going to be the interesting thing. He's going to be a pretty movable chess piece for offensive coordinators. Um, I don't think that he is going to command 12 to 15 carries a game. I think it's going to be less than that. I think it's going to be more of a, you know, he might see a James White in his prime target share. That might be the, you know, that might be the, um, I guess the appeal to gain well is he is a good runner, but, you know, he's 190 yeah, to 198 say, pounds. I mean, he's not, are, he, yeah, he's not, you know, he's five. Oh, I think he's five, 10 and a half, five, 11, about 195 ish pounds. Yeah. So if um, you're not familiar with him, he's from Memphis. Yeah. He's five eleven, one ninety 190 ish, maybe a little yeah. more. I could see him. He took the year off because of COVID. Uh, yeah, he, he had, was one of the had, first guys out. He had three yeah. family members. Yeah, I think three, passed, yeah, away, three passed from away from it. It's crazy, man. Um, yeah, so just a little bit of uh, background crazy. at Gainwell. I could see him coming into something like a combine, maybe closer to a 200 at a spe- yeah. like just trying to put yeah. on as much weight as he can. And then going back down because uh, that's his play speed is what makes him. Uh, oh yeah. He's fantastic. no, he's, he's a good player, man. He's a darn good player. Um, I think it's one of those, you know, for the fantasy appeal, it's PPR. Like you're <laughs> like James, what dude, Tariq Cohen was RB. What? 11, like two yeah. years ago. Like, come on. Yeah. Well, there's there's a lot there's a lot to unpack here with him I think and I think I think he has the potential to be in this tier for me but I think he would end up being a tier right below I think me. he's the bo- for me he's the bottom of he's the bottom right. of this tier so for so I wanted to ask you about that so tier two you were saying that there, there's like elite qualities to their game what what would you say his elite quality is just like the versatility and the receiving yeah his receiving skill set I think that's one of the like when I charted him, it's, you know, watching the games and seeing, Hey, like, where does he win? Like how often does he win? Like, He's so confident with that huge. ball in the air. Dude. Like, that's the thing is you don't get that from running backs. I mean, it's, you know, like there's very, it's very seldom when you get a running back, you just put him in the slot and you know, okay, he's a legitimate threat there. Like yeah. guys like Camara McCaffrey, like that's the level that he could be on one day in terms of his receiving capabilities. I don't know. He's not going to be those guys as runners and in between the tackles, especially um, that's not him, but as a pure receiving threat, he's fantastic. Right. Uh, top, top shelf, top of the class at that regard. I do wonder yeah. about his pl- pass protection a little bit. It seems like yeah, but that's not gonna diagnosing be. blitzes and he's not really chip. He's like quick to chip, which to be a third down back, sure, you yeah. have to pick that kind of stuff up. So I could see that being a little bit of a struggle for him. Yeah, I think, it, I think it might be. That's a great point. I think it might be. Um, but I think we saw in this, in the, in the AFC championship game, uh, one thing I was watching a lot was Clyde Edwards Hilaire's maturation as a pass protector. Right. He had, uh, again, he had some really good blitz pickups. You can learn just like receive. I was just about to say, just like catching a football. This is a this is a yeah. learnable trait. It's 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 a learn. It's a teachable, and learnable trait, and and there's a uh, willingness to it. Yeah, as well. exactly. You gotta have to want to do it. And I was really impressed with Edward Solaire's ability to do so. And that was one of the big knocks I'm coming out of LSU was, hey, he, he wasn't asked he, to pass. He, he can't. He, he can't. He, he, he's not good at it, and he wasn't asked to do it. So, excuse me, but he um I, he did a great job in the NFC Championship game, keeping Mahomes clean. Uh, he didn't play as much because of the injury, but right. when he was on the field and was asked to do it, he did a he did a much better job than he did earlier on in his rookie season. And that's what we could see with Gainwell is like the ascension of those qualities, um, just giving him time to grow and learn and mature yeah. as a like holistically as a player is important. Um, but I I mean the kid's a dynamic receiver, dynamic in the open field, yeah. And he's better he's a better than you give him credit for a rusher as well. I agree. Sure, I mean, he's like one of the few players ever to rush for a hundred yards in a game and have 200 receiving Dude, yards. Unbelievable. Same game. It's crazy. Um, and he's, he's pretty fast. He was hitting home runs. I don't yeah. think that he has elite deep speed. Like he is, he, he does seem like he's going to get caught. Good play speed. Nothing, nothing really to write home about. I mean, it's, he's not ETN. Um, you know, he's probably, if you, you know, people listening probably want like a 40s, probably like a low four or five guy. Yeah. Not yeah. bad. 
Like yeah. good, above average, but not like great. But to be that small, it's a little bit of a knock to not be super. You want him to be super fast, but he's not quite there. But I think it's the the more so the like early acceleration. He's good there. Yeah. But the top yeah. end, top end speed's a cherry on top in the NFL. The running back position. Yeah, and, and 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 it's not his it's isn't up. bad. And I think the play speed no. is better than the what the maybe the run like the. Oh yeah, his play speed is better than his, his play speed better than his time speed. And you see yeah. it all the time in the NFL. Like dude, Kareem Hunt was like a four six two guy. Right. Like he doesn't play like a four, and, six, two guy. And Kareem Hunt isn't over overly large either. Like no. he's not a, a big, he's big like guy. He's 215. He's 215, 218. Yeah. He's perfect. I think he came in at, in the closer to the 210. And he was area. like 212, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's not, I, I don't I know. I think it did he, actually he, fluctuate a he little was, bit. Kareem he was a, bit. um, he was a dual threat high school quarterback, uh, gain well. That is, uh, so he hasn't been actually playing this set position for right for very position, long. yeah. Um, hey, and shout out to Memphis because they know what the fuck they're doing. I'm running back, so apparently, that was, that was the next thing I had was you apparently, know, that, that Memphis man. pipeline has been insane. You have Daryl Henderson, Henderson, Gibson, yeah, yeah, Daryl Henderson, ton of potential there, just Jeez. very electric. He had two thousand. He had, two, I think he had back to back two thousand yard seasons. Yeah, like, in total yards. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Pollard like, came in damn. who could easily be a very solid player given the opportunity you've seen right. in spot duty. Gibson comes in last season. He just looks like he's bursting at the seam every time he fucking touches the ball. Right. And then you have Gainwell, uh, who if Mike Norvell is quoted as saying he was the best athlete he's been around at Memphis. Like, yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, and so one thing is like, I see that I feel like they're, could possibly be from all this Memphis success or and and love there may be a possible market like overcorrection in in the, the elevated stock price yeah. for Gainwell just in general like Maybe. I think I think people are going to be a little bit like there's just there's now a stigma attached to what's coming out of Memphis sure. and the, the success of those bags then, yeah so I think there may may be a little bit of an elevated price tag on Gainwell where he's not as much like some of those other guys where he needs to go to the right system. Right. To, and I, I said with pot, like I was in on Gibson because I was wrong on Pollard because I didn't think that he would be able to, I thought he was like a, a tweener kind of slot guy and he, he went and did his thing and I, I, I was wrong and I was all in on Gibson. Um, but it seems like th- there he's going to game. Well, going to be very dependent on what coaching, scheme and mind grabs him and how they intend on using him. And, and, and then that coach stays around long enough to implement what his vision was for Gainwell. Um, Cause a lot of right. the times you might see somebody who grabs him, he gets drafted. Then two years later, the coach changes over. Right. Which, you know? Um, so th- I think there's a lot of things with Gainwell that are, that are really fun and really great. And he's, he's got a good change of direction. Um, he knows where to be on the field as a receiver, like as far as where to sit down, where to be to get a soft spot. And he knows how to use the field then as a runner. Um, so, and he just seems pretty natural at everything that yeah, he does, yeah, like all of his movements good, and all of his yeah, everything. Just seems, uh, so I just, I do throw like, I'm not going to draft. I don't think I would draft game well in the first round of a rookie draft. It depends on where he lands. Well, I well, think, there's a couple of places where I could say, sure, I really like trust that mind there, but there's sure. other there's other places where he's going to go, and I'm like, I don't know what to think of that guy and how they're going to use him. Like Lafleur didn't really use Derrick Henry very much when he was in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee, and then he goes over there and you know he has a great running game and uses the shit out of Aaron Jones last year, a little <laughs> different this year, right? Um, but you know, there's some guys that I absolutely would trust with Gainwell, and and I do think the the big best thing of Gainwell is. He does seem like there's people out there and there's coaches out there who definitely view football moving towards a little bit more position, less football. Yes, yeah. And I think he's a perfect kind of guy for that, but he just has to be with the right guy who understands that kind of stuff. Yeah. I th- that's a great, I think that's a great point, man. I mean, I think we're, we're seeing that in the NFL now with the Debo Samuels of the world of the Visca right. Chenault's of the world, you know, Alvin Kamara was, I think the one who kind of sparked it because how good he was as a receiver naturally, um, but man, I mean, you're right. It's, it's going to be very much, you know, where he goes, the environment he goes into. Um, imagine if he goes, like, like I said, San Francisco's a spot for ETN, man. What if, the, what if it's game? Well, 
Right. I mean, sure. And that be one of those situations spot. where I under like I I'm a Niners fan. Like I under, right. like I home have all spot. the Shanahan knows what he's doing. I have full confidence in what he's got has going on. Like I understand how he's gonna scheme things. Like Chenault, I, I like Chenault, but like I didn't have any confidence that the Jaguars were gonna use him no. properly. And and do I think Urban Meyer has a decent handle on using guys like that? He has a history with some guys like that, but he's never coached in the league before. I don't know what the fuck he's gonna do. And I, yeah, sure, I would buy I would Still buy buying Chenault, I, I'll buy some Chenault. I'm oh, I like sure. Chenault. Like I really yeah. do. I you saw some hey, good things out of LaVisca. Uh, Curtis Samuel, like you saw yeah, finally man. somebody come I, into I that say, system yeah. and and use him. Well, yeah, Urban Meyer tied to that, but Joe Brady yeah. comes in and use uh, all of a sudden and there was came. points of the season where Curtis Samuel looked like he was fucking unguardable and they were giving him the ball a couple of times, you know, yeah, running the ball. No, he, yeah. So for sure, there are certain minds and certain systems where I, you know, if uh, is Curtis Samuel a free agent this year, like, yes, he is. Yeah. I can see the Carolina Panthers taking Gainwell, and I would be, I would be way more into Gainwell if a guy like rule. And I know Brady seems to be there for another year now. So I'm okay with that. Like, I like yeah. that. I it's going to be like, good. you're, you're, I mean, you're absolutely right. It's going to be very situation dependent with him. Um, him more so than the other two guys. Yeah, I we talked about before. Um, because those two guys, Etn and Williams, are more pure runners. Yeah, than they are receivers. And Gamewell's the opposite of that. So, um, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Um, what his role is in the NFL. Um, but yeah. I think he's a darn good player. And me too. If he, if he lands in a really good spot. And you need a running back. I'm happy with taking him in the back back end of the first round. The rookie. Sure, I, I could get. And by the time I was Antonio Gibson was like the middle of the second to me yep. leading up. And then Geis left. And then all of yeah, a sudden no. I ended up taking Antonio Gibson at one, eight, one, nine, one, ten yeah. area, because why not? Uh, because it's running backs and the running back. The reason that you shoot on those, you shoot your shots in rookie drafts or running backs is because the value explosion and the scarcity of the position is so great where I, as I can find a receiver literally growing on the tree in my backyard um, and feel sure. good about putting him in my lineup anyway. All right, let's move on. J Jay Wayne, do you have anything to comment on Gainwell? Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think I could have him this high in this tier. I struggle a little bit with him. I, I you know, I like, I, I obviously agree with the versatility and, and everything that, that you said there. And I think he's a great pass catching uh, back. Um, It'll be interesting to see where he goes. I think he might be one of the more, uh, you know, landing spot dependent players 